Let's begin with settling our minds and doing a little meditation. So sitting comfortably with our back straight. And being aware of your body sensations and any tension that your body may have. And so on the inhalation, you know, the hook the tension and on the exhalation, trying to release that tension or relax into that tension. And then shift your attention to the sensation of the breath at the nostrils. So here we're focusing on the sensation, right, the body sensation of the breath, not the thought of the breath, not visualizing the breath but really just being present and attentive to the sensation, the feeling of the breath at the nostrils. And not trying to hold our attention there. Trying not to follow any thoughts that arise, but allowing the thoughts to remain in the background while the main part of our attention remains on the sensation of the breath. So once again, the awareness of the sensation of the breath is a body consciousness. It's non-conceptual. And as long as it's non-mistaken, it's a direct perceiver.
and thoughts of the past, our memory consciousnesses, which are conceptual and facsimiles of a direct perceiver. Thoughts wishing for something in the future are also conceptual. They're wishing conceptions and facsimiles of a direct perceiver. Recall that what is appearing to the conceptual mind, what is appearing to thought, is an internal image, a mental image, or a meaning generality that we've created, rather than the object itself. But it can be correct and useful in incontrovertible that a conception is always the appearing object of a conception is always a mental image. And there are correct conceptions and there are wrong or incorrect conceptions. The thought that this is the awareness is knowers class is a conceptual mind. It's a correct conception. It's a conventional conception. And it's appearing object is a mental image that we've created a mental image of the awareness of knowers class. And then all of our mental afflictions, our attachment, our anger, our jealousy, our pride, our arrogance, our ignorance, those are all conceptual. And in what is appearing to the mental affliction is a mental image that we've created.
a mental image of the object of the affliction, as well as a mental image of me who is affected by that object. A mental image of a concrete, attractive person or thing. Or a mental image of an unattractive or horrible or awful person or thing. and a mental image of the concrete me. And those mental images were created by ourselves and their exaggerations or distortions by the mind. So that object of engagement of a mental affliction does not actually exist. So mental affliction is a wrong consciousness. It's a wrong conception. It's a facsimile of a direct perceiver. And its object of engagement does not exist. So see if you can notice in your experience the difference between a sense consciousness, you know, that's perceiving sights or sounds or odors or tastes or body sensations directly without a medium of a mental image. and a thought or a conception whose appearing object is a mental image. So seeing if you can notice experientially you know, the difference in your experience between the direct perception and the conceptual mind. The direct perception, which is apprehending the actual object or which in which the, what is appearing is the actual object. And the conception or the thought in which what is actually appearing is the mental image.
Okay, and then broaden your awareness, remembering the 7 billion other people on this planet and the countless other beings. We're all wanting to be happy, not wanting pain and problems. And yet experiencing problems, suffering, physical pain, mental pain, agitation. Again and again, without control. And seeing if we can develop a bodhicitta motivation. Okay.